Okay, my clock said nine o'clock, so uh, here we go. Uh, I'm Richard Calhoun with Creekside Realty. We're here to discuss the real estate market and what's happened. We're gonna look at the different micro markets. So we're starting with last week's DUI graph, and you can see that it was pretty hot marketplace, but remember this is based on five weeks historical data, so it really isn't being impacted negatively by shelter in place. But look at the dramatic change as we move to this week's data. You'll see the red disappears and the black increases. So this area down here, I think, was red. This area was much smaller. This area might have been red up in here on the bay and uh, coast was probably neutral. So the gray is the old black, and I did that for border control. But you can see the whole peninsula area here which is normally what leads the marketplace is now slowed to what I would actually say is a cooler buyer's marketplace. And this is based again on days of, sold in, on days of unsold inventory, which is the leading indicator because it looks at number of offers being accepted versus the regular inventory. Now we're gonna look at my, the next indicator, which is the overbidding. And there's two measures of overbidding. One is um, magnitude of overbidding, and the other one is frequency of overbidding. And, and essentially the graphs are the same on both slides. Here there's a lot more red because now you need closed data and closed data has the duration of escrow which is much uh, typically another 30 days and so we're just basically entering shelter in place on this data. So this is historical data basically at this point uh, especially with the huge disruption we've had in the marketplace. Moving on to looking at the days of unsold inventory and I've changed the order based on uh, flow here. This to me is the three critical micro markets being sing single family homes in Santa Clara County, single family homes in San Mateo County, and then condo townhouses in the yellow line in both counties. So you can see that we were coming along, very nice strong marketplace. We basically hit shelter in place and it's been going straight up. And this is a gradual increase. And the reason this is a gradual increase is when you do five weeks of data, the first day into it, you're only replacing 3% of the data, 135th. The second day, you're only replacing another third, uh, 3%, so you're only 6% new data. So this will continue to go up. We're getting close to being 35 days into shelter in place. We're at 30, so another uh, week uh, will be there, because this is through Saturday, so I guess we hit there on Tuesday. And really, that's even something of uh, for discussion. Uh, shelter in place didn't take place until Tuesday, uh, March the 17th, but it was announced on Monday the 16th. So any disruption in the real estate market would have actually started uh, as of Monday. So now since we're talking about the micro markets, here is the 22 micro markets, and you can see the trend is basically the same on all of them. It basically is going up. So the goal here is to show you the three primary uh, micro markets first, and then show all 22, and that way you can clearly see what the trend is, as well as pick up your favorite micro market that you want to do. And the color code is up here on the top. Next, we're going to move on to something that uh, is a little different. We're just going to look at inventory. And the reason it's a little different is because we're looking at the number of units, the larger micro markets have the most. So Santa Clara County single families on top. San Mateo County is the gray line. That's the next most. And the condos is pretty close because that's both county condos. And then all the different micro markets you can see are down here. And when I designed these micro markets, I was actually hoping to have 200 data points in each micro market. And you can see I'm only about half that level, but it's a compromise. The more data points you have, the more statistically significant the information is, the fewer data points, the more randomness you have. But you can see that the inventory is going up. But again, there's a huge annual cycle in real estate. And at this time of the year, basically from January 2nd, 3rd, 4th, somewhere in that time frame to about the middle of July, I like picking July 19th, inventory is almost always going up no matter what the market is, even in a strong marketplace because more and more sellers are coming on the market. And you can see it's going up, but you can see there was a dip right when shelter in place was announced. Some people initially took their homes off the market and then came back on the market fairly quickly. I think the big impact that we're having that's hard to measure is how many sellers would have come on the marketplace that decided not to come on the marketplace. Then flipping on the other side, this is the number of offers accepted. So you can see we hit a peak right here 
and then we flew down since then. And again, it's the uh, three bigger ones, Santa Clara County, San Mateo County, the condos, and then the 22 micro markets down in here. But you can see the trend is basically all the same. This is unusual. Normally, the most number of sales uh, take a little bit longer to happen. So that's usually about the middle of January through um, the Friday before Memorial Day. So basically somewhere January 15th through about May 25th, depending on when Memorial Day is, is in that period, you're going up all the time. So these number of sales, instead of coming down and right now being some number right around 500 for Santa Clara County, it should be some number higher than 1,000. We're losing more than 500 transactions uh, in a five week period of time, or we're losing more than 100 transactions a week. And that is clearly very significant. The $50 million question is whether we will make up for it in the fall or not. Moving on and looking at the number of closed sales, people might jump to the immediate conclusion, well, that's not so bad. Well, again, remember this is lagging data. So people that were in escrow in a binding contract when uh, shelter in place hit on the 16th of March, they were obligated to buy. Now, some of them walked away, some may lose their deposits, some may be able to get out, arguing that it was an act of God and unforeseen and therefore their deposit shouldn't be lost and things like that. But again, the number of closings should be going up. And again, that would be delayed by about four or five weeks. So instead of the middle of uh, January, it normally goes up from about the middle of February until somewhere three quarters of the way through June, maybe the end of June for the number of closings. Uh, one thing that people don't realize and it's sort of surprising is August is actually not a very good uh, month for closings. So we're nowhere near August. But again, the fact you can see the decrease here is there. And this could be a combination of people pulling out of their uh, at contracts, even though they were obligated to buy. It's also people that are buying cash transactions and doing a quicker than four week close. So moving on to the next one, which is the frequency of overbidding. And again, here I'm gonna do the three counties. Um, when I say the three counties, it's Santa Clara County and San Mateo. The third is the combined condos between them. And you can see the overbidding is actually pretty flat. I would say there might be a slight downtrend since on the 17th of uh, March. You know, was that downtrend already happening? Because it, again, these are contracts that were accepted for the most part, for the large percentage prior to shelter in place. So the set price was set and all those kinds of things. So this is the frequency of overbidding. You can see Santa Clara County was basically at 70% and only flat. What's gonna be interesting as we get past shelter in place by four, five, six weeks, what start happening to the frequency. And just so that you can see it, here is the different micro markets. And you can see the trends are basically all the same. This one micro market here, for some reason, I lost the most recent data point on it. But basically you can see it was coming up as we heated up and buyers realized they had to get uh, competitive. And then it's basically a plateau. Moving on to the other uh, measure of overbidding. It's the magnitude of overbidding. And this is an indication of how desperate buyers are. The other one is how frequent buyers are paying over. This one is how much they're willing to pay over. And this is the three county graph. And you can see that it's definitely rolled over. This is more rolled over than the last. So something's happened and the buyers, even though they may be overbidding as frequently, they're saying we don't have to overbid as much. You know, that might, they're sensing less competition. Maybe they're sensing that maybe they have to overbid, but there's not quite as much competition. This is the same graph with the micro markets. And you can see basically the trend is pretty much the same. There's one back in here that looks like it's bucking the trend and it looks like it's condos and townhouses in the, what I call the moderate priced area in Santa Clara County, which would be Santa Clara, Campbell, Cambrian, and, and Willow Glen. You know, and you might argue there's a couple others that look like they're going up. They're hard to do. When I'm trying to look at a different one, I will highlight that one and get rid of all the others. Moving on to the next data point is sales price. And this is the 10 percentile pricing. So this is the lowest percentage of homes. In other words, you take what is the lowest 10 percent sale price. So if there's 100 homes, you take the 10 cheapest homes and what is that price of the 10th home? 
And you can see the price is basically still going up. But again, this is contracts that were pretty much negotiated before shelter in place was announced. Moving on to the micro markets, you know, this one here is clearly an exception. That's the expensive areas in San Mateo County. It appears to pretty much have dropped coinciding with the shelter in place. But again, that this one doesn't have a whole lot of data points. You know, when you're looking at Menlo Park and Atherton, you know, how many transactions are there? So some of this is statistical fluctuation. You know, you can see some of it back there. Here's another one that's sort of step function, Foster City. It, you know, it's a little tiny air, micro market right at the uh, San Mateo Bridge. You can see it almost does a jump up and down. And that's why my goal was to have 200 properties is to get rid of this statistical fluctuation. You can see Santa Clara County single family, the bright red line becomes fairly stable. And again, you pick up a number here and it's somewhere around 800,000, 880,000 for the cheapest homes. So if you have a client or if you're a consumer looking to buy a house below $900,000 in Santa Clara County, that's actually going to be a challenge. You know, you can do it. 10% of the homes sell below that, but you may be buying in uh, Gilroy or a small house, those kinds of things. Moving on to the next level of sale price is median sale price, which is what most people quote. Again, you can see that we come down and this little dip at the end of each year is really not a loss in value, but there's a tendency for smaller homes to sell during the holidays and smaller homes are worth less money and therefore the median price of what's sold does decrease. But you can see we're up here, we're basically, I can't quite, we're basically, we're $1.4 million. I mean, 1.398, I'll call it 1.4. Uh, the lowest 10 percentile is up to 820,000. The condo townhouse market is up to 820,000. And the townhouses in San Mateo County are up here at something like uh, 1.755, it looks like. And again, if you look at all the different micro markets, this is what you have there. And again, you can see the trend is basically the same. Prices are on a general trend up. You know, you don't expect this uh, graph to go up very rapidly because, you know, you're talking about a weak increment on sale price. So moving on to the 90 percentile, this is what the top percentile homes do in, Santa, in the three different county areas. Uh, you can actually see in San Mateo County, it's come down a little bit, but again, it's a little bit more fluctuation but I would almost be inclined to say this is a, a decrease. So that, that would tend to say that um, people in the expensive areas of San Mateo County have somehow dropped the price and San Mateo County tends to have a, a quicker closes of escrows. And here's the different micro market areas. And again, this one sort of jumps out. It's again, the San Mateo expensive area. There's not a whole lot. You can see it shut up real early in the year. This, you might say, was just a statistical fluke, and maybe the graph should have come up like this, and then it's come down a little bit. But keep in mind, we're still above where we were at the end of last year, so we may have lost um, part of the gain of 2020, but that's the uh, outlining. If you come down to Santa Clara County, you know, you can sort of see the same pattern, but not nearly as much. We're down here, uh, somewhere right around the 11th. And that's sort of significant because if you take the 11th and add eight day, seven days to it for the next week, you're post shelter in place, but you only have a four week close. So this raise in price actually happened while shelter in place happened, but with the time delay, it really wasn't. So that's the appreciation that we look like we're out. You might argue this is down a little bit. I would say that's statistical movement and we really don't have enough data points um, post uh, shelter in place. Duration of escrows, three county areas, you can see, clearly see the trend is up. These were already negotiated timeframes too, but basically what's happening uh, based on my own experience and what hearing from colleagues is there's delays that are popping up and sellers are willing to give you an extension, you know, because the option of going back on the market is pretty unpleasant. And so there's uh, been an increase in the duration of escrow, not dramatic, you know, like if you take um, Santa Clara County, it went from 27 to 30 days. San Mateo County went from 25 days to 30 days. And it seems to be holding at 30, but this may tend to go up a little bit more. Here is the um, days on market. And 
you know, you can see it was pretty flat. These are basically historical low levels here at eight. I think the previous record was nine. But once we hit shelter in place right here, the MLS said, hey, we're going to stop counting days on market. You can see, you know, there's a little dip here, then we were plateaued, and now we're dipping down again. Because if the counter stays at zero, eventually what's on the market will sell or isn't eligible to sell, and everything will be selling at zero data, days on the market. So this data point is useless, actually, at this point. This is that same data for the uh, different micro markets. And again, you can see them all nosediving to zero. It's not a graph, it's a chart. And yeah, it's pretty hard to read. And I'm not sure I can make much sense out of it, but the, the takeaway from my point of view is there's a couple things. The number of transactions that fell through, you know, they were never really high. Well, I actually don't have three shelter in place numbers, but you know, maybe zero, but you know, you hit a highest seven, that might be an eight, but it looks more like a three, another seven, some fives, but now you're back down and you're hitting numbers like zero again. So there was initial gut reaction and then people set turn around and said, hey, it's not so bad. I actually looked at some uh, specific data points and found out like three out of the six properties that came off the market were back on the marketplace. Normally, TFTs, withdrawn, canceled, expired, are information I don't follow. They're just such a small part of the marketplace. So I'm relying on the MLS li listings data for this information, trying to understand it. And uh, in doing so, I've noticed something that's very strange. You get data for something like Monday, April the 13th, that data that should be fixed, the number of increased sales prices, the number of decreased sales prices, the number of new listings, the number of transactions that fell apart on that day, they should be fixed once you're past that day. That data is continued change on the 14th of April, the 15th of April. That does not make sense to me. I figured out how I'm gonna capture the data and try to figure out what's going on. So I, I, I don't have a high confidence in the precision of the data, but I do believe the trends of the data is accurate. This is what I was saying a minute ago. I happened to pick looking at in detail the Barry Essa area. And in that area, there were six transactions that fell apart. Three of them, as I said, basically came off the market. Two of them went right back on the market. And another one was actually from an event that triggered in the fall. That sort of wraps up most of the real estate. Um, have a little bit left as in a hit SARS. Uh, this is Santa Clara County's own data just plotted in logarithmic scale. And you can see that we started off here doubling every three days, then we were doubling every four days, then we were doubling every five days, then we were doubling every six days, then every 12 days, and we're now doubling every 15 days. And that starts becoming very significant because if you're talking, and this is number of new cases, if the, if you go from 1,000 new cases to 2,000 new cases in a two-week period of time, that two-week period of time is about the period of time that people are in the hospital and needing medical care. So basically, then you'd expect the number of people in the hospital to be flat. And guess what? In Santa Clara County, it's basically been flat since April 1st. So the, the capacity that we're running at now is the capacity that we're gonna be going forward with. So hopefully that will be interpreted as good news. I'm gonna show these uh, tables pretty quickly. I will also um, put them on the Google Drive. This is just the raw data that we've gone over in graphical form earlier for the different, the 22 different micro markets. So that's all three of them. And then I'll do a little recap here I, I, and it's not up there yet, but I will have handouts uh, hopefully up later today. And I like these uh, teeny URLs because that part stays the same. This group is gonna be RE graphs is the root. And then if you want handout, you do handout and the date. And if you want to come to this, the archives of this presentation, go teeny, you are, tiny URL and RE, RE market graphs and that takes you to YouTube channel and you get to see them. Future presentations, you do teeny URL, RE market graphs and the data of the presentation. So the next week is there. I'm open for questions by email. 
And since I made that through in 20 minutes, I got a lot of time. So I will stop and open it up for the questions from the people that are with me. Um, okay, I wanted to see uh, during, uh, in Santa Clara County, uh, during this time, you know, from last meeting to this meeting, how many uh, actually uh, number of actives that we have and uh, how many sales, wh wh which, which um, table that we can find it? I mean, exactly number, actual number. Yep. Um, well, some of it you can. If we go to this slide right here at the top, and I'm going to, yeah, I can actually zoom in and see if I can. So the number of active inventory right now. Well, where, okay. It, it's the fourth slide from the end. But the number of active inventory in Santa Clara County single family homes is 851. I cannot see. Eight hundred. Oh, eight. Oh, eight fifty-one. Okay. 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 Yeah, so I see. That's an A. And you go up here to column A E. So okay. it's column A E, and then and then the micro markets over on the thing here on the side here. So this is Santa Clara County, a single family, and that's how I come over and get the eight hundred fifty-one. Okay. Then I see. Okay, that's important. And then, so how many uh, sales? Oh, closed sales. Okay. Close How many sales. actives? Yeah. Actives is 800, 851. Number of offers accepted is this 506. 506. But that, but that isn't quite the question you asked because that's in the last five weeks. Okay. So that's up through midnight last night going back through Saturday five weeks ago. I think what you asked for is the number of sales since shelter in place. And we can, we can get you that number. And then the other number you were asking for is closings, and that's the 654 down here. Okay, so these are the during the five weeks. This is all oh, during the five weeks. Yeah, right. I did do something else that you might find interesting. Since, okay, you should have a different graph up now. Yeah, okay, yes, I see the tables. Okay, what I did here on the far left, you can see vacant homes. And what right. I would, what I would, because the only things that real estate agents can currently show are vacant homes. Right, so yeah. calculated the DUI based on vacant homes. Uh -huh. Based That's on right. all homes, it's up here at 59 days. On vacant homes, it's 53. So vacant homes are better because they're only at 90%, and with DUI, a low number is better. Okay. And if you look through this, some of the areas, the vacant homes are actually doing worse than the occupied homes, which is a huge red flag. There's a problem there. But, uh -huh. you know, one of the things that's going on is agents are saying instead of vacant, they're saying call agent. So a vacant uh -huh. home may have call agent and isn't it counted as my vacant homes. So I, I didn't see any data. Uh, you're not going to have this, but I'm going to log on to the MLS and pull that up and we will answer your actual question. Uh, yeah, I think, I think the good question is that since uh, March 17th, up to now, how many actives and how many closed? I think that, that will have some more ideas about what's going on after the, you know, after the shelter in place. I would actually disagree with that. Really? And then the, number, <laughs> the number of closings, most of those closings, and you saw that graph was flat. So okay. the, number of the number of closings isn't getting uh, impacted yet because we're just now getting to the impact because if you if you say your typical escrow is 30 days long right. if you go to march 17th then you're at april 17th before you've run out of closing so going forward the number of closings may be uh reflective but it isn't reflective right now right because it's still too early it's still too early right now okay. the, number of, the now the number of offers accepted they would have some ballot ballot validity currently but even mm -hmm. that, what you have to do is look at shelter in place, and shelter in place has changed dramatically. Because remember, for the first two weeks, we weren't able to show any property. Mm -hmm. And only right. in the last two weeks have we been able to show only vacant properties. And that was why I was separating a vacant properties. I was going to try to find out what was happening with vacant properties. And, you know, I, I'm not sure there's enough data points to really see, show there. Mm -hmm. But right. um, let me... Uh, 
stop sharing and reshare my screen and it will come up with the MLS. I think the pending number should have pretty clear ideas. And that's what I was going to do here. So you got the MLS input screen in front of you now. So you, over yeah. on the left, you can see I'm picking up. Uh, right, pending, pending yes. Polls. Just come over here to sale date. And, you know, you were going back to March 17th. And I'm going to say, no, let's not do that. Because in March yeah. 17th, we couldn't sell anything. So any, nothing could be sold. Let's start on April 1st. Okay. okay. Because that's when we could start selling um, property. Yeah, that's and because, good. Uh, and because we're only on the 18th, we'll go through the 17th. Let's look at the number of homes between April 1st and April 17th. Single family yes. homes. Right. Um, uh, Santa Clara <laughs> County. Oh, so wow. You, okay, good. You've had 241 sales. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now what you could do is say, let's just, you know, that's basically half a month. Let's double that to 500 sales. You know, so that's how many offers have been accepted. Well, what number would you expect? Well, we're in April and I'm, I'm pulling up another slide here. So you now have a graph, uh, a chart with some colored lines on it, I trust? Yes. Okay. So... We, we're saying there's going to be somewhere around 500 sales, 240 sales, and, uh, 480 sales, somewhere in that magnitude. Look uh, for number. one month, yeah. Okay, and th this is based on April. And actually doubling that number is probably good because my normal numbers are from uh, April 1st through, and then five days into May. So going through the 17th is halfway, so let's call it 500. But now let's look at where we normally are. Let me get rid okay. of that. Uh, we're normally at 1,200 sales, and this oh. is, it, let me go up to the top so you get some reference. So now, here's your year up here. So this is 2019. Oh, there it is. It's even, so right here, you can see the number, the year. Mm -hmm. So last year, we did 1,180. In 2018, we did 1,184. In, 20, mm -hmm. in 2017, we did 1,265. So you can look, you know, a bit. A, Sort of the low end of normal is 1,200. You come back here and some of our great years were 2,000. Yeah. So we were selling one-fourth of what we sold in a great year. We're selling about a third of what we sold in a typical year. So we're selling one heck of a lot less homes, but homes are still selling. Yeah, right. Well, it's a very slow. It is. In, it, it, is yes. it is definitely slow. Um, yeah. you know, people were talking about uh, level of marketplace and things like that, you know? Yes. You, 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 you're okay. still getting multiple offers. You're still getting overbidding, but it is a slow marketplace. You're not going to have the looky lose. Um, you know, we're supposed to discourage consumers from going to the property. So we're supposed to have them look at all the virtual tours ahead of time. I would probably have a client review disclosures yeah. ahead of time. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, that's good. I, I, you know, I know, I know how to look, into these tables. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. very much.